Abba Namaste, guys. Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Saturday, <laughs> on this Saturday afternoon, evening, six o'clock p.m. here in Frisco, Frisco, Colorado, um, which is about five miles from Breckenridge, which is where we started out earlier this morning. Tina, Abba Namaste. And it's been a very full, very chunky, very... Andrew says, didn't do it. Good job, Andrew. Taking accountability. Proud of you. Tina, what's up with the the smiley face, the sun, and the dancing? Are you doing salsa this evening? Yeah, it's been a full day. Hiking, going to the Airbnb, heading, walking around Frisco. Got my very first, what's it called? Uh, got my very first pedicure. It was amazing. Super, super grateful for that experience. And uh, then Chrissy, I'm going to say, then had a a little snack for the evening. My body's not too hungry because I had one and a half milkshake <laughs> with a little bit too much milk, which is not my jam. So it's been a full day, but we're doing our best to be consistent and persistent and following up with our challenge reviews in the evenings at 6 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. And what is your feedback? Paul, Abba Namaste. It sure is a beautiful day. That's for shizzle. Uh, good job, Chrissy. You did it. Excellent. Elena and Tina did it. Excellent. Very, very good. Josiah, Abba Namaste. Welcome. So today's challenge of challenge number 47 was to answer these three questions. What does world peace look like? How come we haven't achieved world peace? And what can we do to move in the direction of world peace? Nora, I'm a namaste. Uh, Nora. Uh, Nora, I want to give you a shout out. Lori, I'm a namaste. Thank you for your message, by the way. I apologize for not getting back to you. I'm glad you're enjoying the challenges. We'll keep doing our best to keep mixing up these challenges for the next couple weeks. But thank you for being on. Thank you for sharing your um, energy with the group. Very, very appreciative. Nora is one of my old uh, Zook dancing partners, and she taught me some bachata. She's the first person ever to teach me bachata moves. So I love I love Nora. Big, fat, juicy heart for Nora. Um, so <clears throat> what was your feedback? Start at, huh, start at home. Start what at home? Start, oh, start the challenges at home? Oh, oh, okay. So Nora's realization about world peace is start at home. Very good. What else? What else? What else? What else? I forgot about bachata. <laughs> what was your experience before, during, and after the challenge? You got assigned the challenge this morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. You did the challenge itself. And then afterwards, what's your feedback? Roar. Roar. I don't know what that means, Josiah. Did it, that a boy. Lori says, I did it, but traveling can't stay on. We'll listen later and post later. Thanks, girl. I appreciate you being accountable and following up. People within the gymnastics community, within the health community, the fitness community, they are all about consistency. Physical will. And when you practice physical will, you develop the inner will. The best way to practice the inner will is manipulating the physical body. Nora says, it is hard. It sure is. World peace to me would look like everyone getting along and lifting one another up. Okay? Everyone getting al- getting along and lifting one another up. So you're looking at harmony and encouragement. Good. What else? Suresh, Abba Namaste. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jillian, Abba Namaste. You changed your profile picture again. It's once a week with you. It's good to see you. Hope you're well. Suresh did it because the man is uh, taking action junkie. I love it. What was your feedback, Suresh? Everyone, all the people who did the challenge, what was your feedback from doing the challenge? What did you learn about yourself in the process? Uh, What were... Hold on. Whoa, Suresh is blowing up the, the messaging. What would world peace look like? People living in harmony, love and kindness together with nature, leaders, people making decisions based on the good of all. Why haven't we achieved it? Karmically not entitled. <clears throat> Good viewpoint. People not open for change, not ready, lacking awareness. What would we need to do to achieve it? Education of who we really are. We are one and what we do to others affects us and the world. Brilliant. 
regardless of differences. Excellent, Hina. Josiah, uh, no, Suresh, that was very, very well said. Josiah says, it allowed me to see it start with myself. Perfect. And then look, Nora and Josiah said the same thing back to back. Start with yourself. Group work is really important. Yes, it certainly is. What else, what else, what else? It looks like I'm like not wearing, like I have my shirt wide open, which is not really the case. Look at this button has come undone. Um, <clears throat> what else? Sorry, guys. Scratchy on the mic. What else did you learn about yourself doing today's experience or the challenge? What is world, what does world peace look like to you? Marcella, I'm a namaste. Why haven't we achieved world peace? Right? And then what can we do to move world peace forward? Okay. I'm surprised Dave is not on. This is right up his alley considering where he's going to be going to school this coming fall. <clears throat> what else? What else? What else? I'm, I'm giving you guys a few minutes before we go into the higher aspects and the higher teachings around world peace. It's super still out here. It's quiet. It's peaceful. The This is the main street over here <clears throat> for Frisco, <clears throat> Frisco, Colorado. It's a teeny tiny mountain town, very prosperous. Um, a lot of great shops, completely different from the mountain town that I was at this past weekend. Uh, <laughs> or this past, actually this week. Um, about the same size, but completely different demographic. And different, a lot different. So Chrissy says, this one took some time, good, struggled for answers and found myself clock watching. Uh, interesting. Egos get in the way, need to teach kids young to understand that people look, think, and believe differently, but that is wonderful and they should accept it. Might take a pandemic to get rid of all this stupid to achieve it. So that's an interesting point that Chrissy's talking about with world peace. Need to teach young kids to understand that people look, think, and believe differently, but that it's wonderful and they should accept that. What unites people? Differences or similarities? Right? Think about that. What unites people? Differences or similarities? I'll get back to that in a second. Norris says, spread the positive. I want super still and quiet. This is definitely a place. You are five miles... Nora, where are you at, girl? You're five miles away from me. That's so funny. Yeah, we're over in Breckenridge. We're doing an Airbnb. Uh, Tina says, it starts with me then at home to raise my children to continue to be better. So Chrissy says, similarity. Correct. Excellent, excellent point. Both can. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, you're in Silverton. Okay, yeah, right around the corner. That's funny. What a small world. It's a small world after all. Ben, Atma Namaste. Good to see you as always. Hope you're doing well. Hope real estate is doing well. Hope modeling is doing well. Ben's one of the most attractive men I've ever seen in my entire incarnation. He's a beautiful man inside and out. Hope you're doing well. What else? What else? What else? Before we, we go into the higher practices and the higher teachings. <laughs> okay. Today's challenge, 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 challenge number 47, right? Challenge number 47 was, what does world peace look like to you? Why don't we have world peace? What can we do to move world peace forward? Okay? Of course, Ben. Not a problem, man. Hope you're, hope you're well. Hope the family's well. Hope you're making millions and millions of dollars, either modeling or doing real estate. Tina says, if we can agree... If we can agree to disagree. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Anything else? Anything else? There's so much that can be covered about this. It's a fascinating topic. I'll wait. I know there's a 15 to 20 second delay. Everything we do on Facebook. So it's like I'm in the future. It's almost, am I in the future or are you guys in the future? One of us are in the future. 
If there's a 15 to 20 second delay on your end, then that means I'm in the future. Whoa, mind blown. <clears throat> okay, so to cover why you guys are adding more things, today's challenge, connecting it to world peace, when I started my spiritual path in 1999 with transcendental meditation, that was taught control anger would help as well. Good call, Nora. Paul says, you're in the future. Yes, I love being in the future. Wait, Paul, you're in Australia, so you're actually in the future. Paul, you're in Australia. Let me know what the winning lottery numbers are for the states. Just let me know when you have a minute so I can, you know, make the necessary corrections, okay, for the Powerball. So, and Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who was known as the guru to the Beatles in the 1950s and 60s, and... George Harrison stayed with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi up until his passing in early 2000s that the whole function of the Transcendental Meditation Movement is about world peace. And their way of generating world peace was through education and through meditation. Educating people on universal truths and principles and then having people meditating together and the radiance and coherence that a group of meditators would radiate within their within a certain radius would raise consciousness. And if consciousness is raised, what does that mean? More light is coming down, more power is coming down, more love is coming down within an area which does what? Creates coherence. So someone who is angry, someone who is stressed out, or someone who is fearful, the their energy body is not coherent right? It's not coherent. It's not smooth up and down, up and down vibrations, right? It's like erratic like this, right? So people that live in war-torn areas, there's a tremendous amount of disharmony. People that live with famine, that live with disease, that live with political strife, right? Riots, protests, there's lack of coherence within the environment and within the individual, okay? So when you educate people, of who and what they are, you are able to ex- you are able to see the principle of oneness, which is connected to the law of karma, in everything that you do. So, what do I mean by that? So, Chrissy made the thing that if we can see each other's differences, we can get along. But in actuality, it's reversed. Through the principle of oneness, when you go, we are one, we are connected. Whatever I do to you, I'm doing to myself magnified many, many times, it is going to, with that understanding, have you go, huh, if I steal from this person, some someone or something will be stolen from me. If I cheat, if I am cruel, if I lie, deceive, whatever negative thing I do to that person is going to come back to me many, many times. So we, we are all in this together, right? So I'm more about celebrating oneness than I am about celebrating diversity. Diversity in form, oneness in... oneness in beingness, right? There's diversity in form, right? I'm sitting here in Frisco, Colorado, uh, a white Irish guy, five foot eight, with glasses, 40 years old. Those are some of the differences from me to you. But spiritually, we are one. Mentally, not as as one. Emotionally, not as one. Physically, not as one. But where should we spend our time on? The oneness principle. Spiritually, we are one. We are divine children of God. Beings of light, beings of love, beings of power, right? So instead of seeing the differences of us, we start seeing the similarities. That what? We all want to be happy. We all want to love and be loved. These are similarities among the human race, right? Not the differences. So the Maharishi effect was validated over 600 studies of about 20 years starting in the 1970s that when you had a group of people meditating together, 1% of the population doing the TM technique, it would improve the coherence and joy within a community and they had different ways of measuring this. Then when you had the same, when you had the number of TM Siddhas meditating 
instead of needing 1% to create that effect, you needed the square root of 1% to create that effect. So you needed less people to have the same effect. So that's why he was always trying to train TM Siddhas to be meditating in groups around the world. So that's called the Maharishi effect. But this principle takes place with all people of goodwill and the will to do good coming together and meditating together. So within pranic healing, every full moon, I've been in pranic healing for 16 years, every single month, pranic healers get together as a group physically or get together as a group virtually online and they all meditate together doing what? Enacting that principle of more people meditating together brings down more divine light, divine love, divine power, and that energy radiates throughout the environment that they, those people are in and alleviates the, the suffering of humanity. It cleanses and purifies the environment of different kingdoms, the angelic kingdom, the human kingdom, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the mineral kingdom, right? It's raising the vibration because when we're suffering, the vibration is very, very low. True or not true? When you're angry, low vibration. When you're fearful, low vibration. When you're um, depressed or sad, low vibration. So the question is, well, how come we haven't had peace? How come we haven't had peace? One of the princi- one of the reasons we don't have peace is because it's primarily connected to the heart chakra. Our education system around the planet, not just the United States, not just first world countries, the education system around the planet is connected to the throat and asana chakras. I'd like to join that group each month. Ben, every single day at 8.30 a.m. Mountain Time, we jump on with a virtual stream and we meditate as a group. So you're more than welcome to join. Just check out my Facebook page, like go below this video on Facebook, and you'll see the invite. It's the same link, 8.30 a.m. Mountain Time, every single day, seven days a week. So there's your opportunity, right? So... As where um, the traditional education system over the past 200 years is constantly developing the throat, which is knowledge, and partially develop, developing understanding, right? So when we sit down and absorb information in a book, um, a podcast, a YouTube video from a professor or teacher or mentor or guide or healer, right? We're absorbing energy through our throat. So we're getting knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Knowledge is good, but knowledge isn't the end goal, and knowledge isn't deeply transformative. Then you have energy in the ajna, which is understanding the knowledge that you're acquiring. So you read a book, you listen to a podcast, you watch a YouTube video, you're acquiring knowledge, but then you have to go, well, what does this mean? How can I apply this in my day-to-day life to alleviate my suffering? What am I not seeing? Where, where are the pros and the cons? That's the ajna chakra, understanding. But the interesting thing is, How much of our education system is focused on the heart? How much is focused on developing the heart than developing the crown? Because which chakra deals with oneness? The crown chakra. How do you rapidly activate and develop the crown? Through the heart. So if we have an education system throughout the world that's focused solely on the throat and and, and the ajna chakras, we're never developing the heart. So we have people who are very intelligent but not very loving. We have people that are very sharp and very witty, but not very kind, not very soft, not very warm, right? That is what soothes people and alleviates the suffering of others, right? So it's good to have an intelligent mind, but you have to have a loving heart because how many people throughout human history have been brilliant and they've used their brilliance to destroy and injure the world, right? Tens of millions of people, right? But if you have a big, open, loving heart, super, super loving heart, and you provide a little bit of light aspect or intelligence and a little bit of will, that person can transform humanity. Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Master Toa Koksui, right? So the secret is in the heart, and it's educating people on how to access their heart and how to develop their heart and over time, you will have world peace. That's why you message Correct. But that's not connected to world peace. So, does that make sense? So, that's why world peace isn't there because our education system is focused on the throat and the ajna, which is very important. 
But if you leave out the heart component, you have very intelligent people who are not good at mastering their emotions. You have intelligent people that can solve problems, but they solve problems from a very mental place. They don't solve problems that are um, kind and loving and sweet and doing the right thing. The right thing is connected to the Ajna, but if you have love connected to intelligence, you're an extremely powerful human being, right? So there's a school that was founded by Rudolf Steiner, who is a um, Austrian mystic, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant teacher. And he founded Waldorf School. And the first seven years of teaching in Waldorf, so you have the little tiny nuggets come in to learn, the first seven years deals entirely with the right brain. The right brain, which deals with what? Creativity, which deals with um, intu- intuition, right? Which deals with the forehead chakra, which deals with wisdom. So it's none of this like reading, writing, arithmetic. That's not the methodology that they start with in Waldorf Steiner School or Rudolf Steiner Waldorf School. They actually start with the heart. And they start with moving the body and they start with developing your intuitive faculties. So then as you grow up and your your intelligence is guided by your heart versus the other way around, being super, super intelligent and then trying to give the person a heart. It's a little bit more difficult. Okay. So Christy says, Master Ko does a live full moon meditation every month. The time is posted on his Facebook page a few days before. Correct. So the masters in pranic healing every single month, they'll have anywhere from 800 to 1,000 people or more on the full moon meditations. They haven't been doing those live though. They've been doing them recorded. So yes, that's an opportunity to come together once a month and generate a tremendous amount of energy to propel your life forward. So that's good. It's also better to meditate every single day, right? So that's why we offer the daily meditations. Um... So is that making sense? How what what does world peace look like? World peace looks like the planet is in harmony with the divine plan, which what's the divine plan? Evolution. Heaven on earth. It's actually interesting because heaven when you ask a Buddhist what is heaven, he would say which heaven? Right, because there are many realms within the inner world. So when you say heaven, you mean energy world. That's what heaven is, the energy world. And there's different d- levels of the inner world. It's infinite, right? So when we say heaven on earth, it means that the qualities of the higher soul are being imbibed in our day-to-day living. So if we were all living from our divine light, our divine love, and our div- divine power aspects what would the world look like? It would be transformed. And Grandmaster Cho Kuk Sui's main vision that he dedicated his entire life to is a 150-year plan to create three holy masters on the planet. And he says if the if this plan materialized as it's designed and there were three holy masters on the planet, the world would be unrecognizable, which is a pretty big thing unrecognizable. So there's nothing wrong with being a very intelligent person. There's nothing wrong with being a very powerful person. But if love is missing, we miss the boat. Josiah gets it. Love has to be there. Because love does what? It preserves, it provides, and it protects. So you withdraw love from the equation of life. Life isn't worth living. Maria, have a namaste. Okay? So love has to be there. All three have to be there. You have to have will, you have to have intelligence, and you have to have love. But if you remove love from the equation, humanity, as Master has said, if you remove love, humanity will destroy itself. The reason humanity has not destroyed itself is because of the love aspect. Yeah, Josiah says, without love, what is left? Right. As Master says, without a life without love is like living in a refrigerator. Who wants to live in a refrigerator? I don't. Okay? So that is our talk for this evening, everyone. Thank you so much for doing the challenge. 
Ciao, Bob, and namaste. Thank you so much for doing the challenge. Thank you for following up. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you for taking notes in your challenge notebook. We have, uh, what, 13 more challenges before we reassess and get feedback of like, are we going to keep going in the direction of the challenges? Are we going to make the challenges more um, set up a certain way? Are we going a completely different direction? I wouldn't say completely different direction because all of our streams, our meditations, our um, challenges are designed to transform you as a soul. Samantha, I'm going to say that's what they're designed to do. Every single thing that we do is to, is to transform us. So I was, I'm from Alaska. Does that count as a fridge? Ha <laughs> ha. That's right. I totally forgot that. Yeah, Alaska has some beautifulness going on. Very cold, as I understand it. So check us tomorrow at 8 o'clock a.m. for challenge number 48, challenge 48, um, where we can transform ourselves. Uh, Oops. Ben says, love, love is a many splendid thing. All you need is love. Love lifts us up where we belong, Moulin Rouge, which is not from John Lennon, right? It's It's a Beatles song though, right? Love is all we need? No. Oh, that's a, that, that is a Beatles song. But right, but isn't that funny? That's, that's so, the line with him, love is all you need. No, but that's funny though, right? Good job, Ben. Nailed it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so join us tomorrow for another challenge at 8 o'clock a.m. And then at 8.30 a.m. we're doing another uh, Twin Hearts meditation. So you just jump on Zoom. The link's already on my page. And then I put the link again above my video right before the meditation. So any questions, let me know. And I look forward to serving you guys now and forever no where we belong oh I never saw all of Moulin Rouge I know you want to see it alright so I love you guys very very much enjoy the rest of your day your night your week your life I will talk to you tomorrow uh, all you need is love that's right Nora all you need is love there's levels of truth to that you have physical love you have financial love you have sexual love you have emotional love you have mental love and you have spiritual love there's many different kinds of love. But at the end of the day, it's all connected to what? Love. I love Nora. You're so funny. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. May you be blessed. May you be healed by God and my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui. And I will talk to you tomorrow. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma Namaste. Bye-bye.